Cinco de Mayo. Y today is also prom day. Woo, I'll be there, so be excited to see you. All right, so today we are going to be doing the vintage uh, zoo poster critique. Yay! And uh, you've seen the objectives, the visual art standards. So which standard is the critique? The critique is standard two, perceiving. So this is where students will find meaning by analyzing, criticizing, evaluating visual art. So we are critiquing and evaluating is um, considering whether or not the artist was successful in um, provoking the meaning, the desired meaning in you that was intended. And last week, just for a quick review, um, if you have been participating in attending classes or watching the recordings, um, you know that we talked about hidden agendas. Um, for this project, you were trying to create meaning in your artwork and asking yourself, how can you create more substance? How can I make my viewer think outside the box? So the chances are, if you have not done this assignment, then this is for you. Um, also be thinking about these uh, vintage zoo posters. If they were posted somewhere visibly, what kind of impact would they have on life outside of school? This is important to think about with your artwork because we don't want you just submitting artwork to me as the teacher and I'm the only person who ever sees it. Ultimately, we want you to start publishing your work and having it be seen and having it make an impact on life outside of school. A critique, and you've heard this before, is a four-step critical thinking process. Process one is the description. It just talks about what medium was used and what you're seeing. It's very superficial. Step two is the analysis, and this is where you're going to dig deeper and analyze the elements and principles of design that are used. Step three is the interpretation. This is where you're trained to figure out what the meaning is or what did the artist intend the meaning to be. So for this vintage zoo poster, you're asking, is the artist for, against, or ambivalent towards Zeus? And today our big vocabulary word is ambivalent. So you'll walk out of this lesson being able to use that word. Nice, add that to your toolbox. For evaluation, did the artist successfully, so remember evaluation is determining success and using the elements and principles of design, did the artist successfully convey the message? And also does the artist fulfill the rubric? Because that's pretty important. So the first uh, step is description. So if I were going to describe this, I would say something like the medium is GIMP or Adobe Photoshop and it's graphic design of a vintage zoo poster. The subject matter is simply a panda hugging a tree with an advertisement for Brookfield Zoo. Step two, the analysis, going deeper. Um, let's analyze the elements and principles of art. So what elements of design are illustrated in this vintage zoo poster? And I would challenge you to put your pointer, what you think is the most dominant element of art used in this design? Is it line, shape, space, value, texture, color, or form? Well, students in our live class said that color was the most dominant element used, and I'd have to agree. If you had to choose between line and shape, what element is more dominant in this poster? Put your pointer next to the one you think is most dominant. Line or shape? Shape is definitely the most dominant element here. Um, there are implied lines. So an implied line is like the line that is there on the outer edge of those shapes. Did the artist actually make like a black outline? No. So these are implied lines. So shape is definitely the most dominant. And then another question, what types of shapes dominate the image? So do we have geometric shapes like squares, triangles, isosceles, triangles, prisms, circles, rectangles? Those are geometric shapes. Or do we have organic shapes, organic shapes take the forms of the natural world. Organic, hopefully you got that right. If you had to choose between space and value, what element is more dominant in the poster? Space, so the area around, within, or between images or parts of an image, and it relates to perspective, and we have positive and negative space. So in this image right here, depending on whether you're looking at the two people or the, the trophy, um, 
it's kind of an optical illusion, which is the positive and which is the negative space. This gives a really good example of the way space fills a composition. And then value is when we're looking at the darkness or lightness of a color. For example, we've got pure whites on one end of the spectrum and pure blacks on the other. And then for a good three-dimensional type of feel, you'll have a full spectrum or gradient of tones in the middle. So when you look at this image, we actually have solid colors. So we're not seeing a lot of those mid-tone values. We're not getting a three-dimensional feel. So this is more flat, right? Space is actually the dominant element of this poster. So let's look a little closer at space. So positive space refers to the space objects take up to create the focal area. What is the focal area of this artwork? What objects compose the positive space? So would you say A, the cream colored sky is the positive space, the focal area? Or would you say B, the panda hugging the tree is the positive space, the focal area? C. Ah, good, I hope you got this right. The panda hugging the tree. The, the sky creates the negative space. So the opposite of positive space is negative space. And that's what's going on in the background. But negative space is also very important too. So the artist chose the light cream color to help to create contrast. So it's really important that your negative space contrasts enough with your focal area to emphasize that area so that it doesn't kind of blend into that background and isn't seen as well. So that makes it pop. If you had to choose between texture and color, what element is more dominant in this poster? We don't really see a lot of texture. Usually texture has kind of a three-dimensional feel, like you feel like you could just touch it with your fingers and you'd be able to feel it, right? There's not a lot of that. Like I said, it's quite flat. So color is definitely dominant. All right. What color grabs your attention the most in this image? Just out of curiosity. Remember, the intention is to create emphasis, right, on our focal point. Our focal point, hopefully, is this panda hugging the tree. So do you think the artist did a good job? This is an evaluation. Was the artist successful at using color to draw your attention to the focal point? So that was a little summary of the elements of design. I thought that shape, space, and color were more, most dominant. All right, so the principles. Remember, the elements are the building blocks, and the principles is how we use those building blocks to make the art. So we use those building blocks to create patterns, contrast, emphasis, balance, etc. Let's look at each one. So what elements repeat in this image? Do you remember what the elements are? Well, one of the dominant ones we talked about was color, right? So color definitely repeats. We've got pattern of green repeating and blue repeating. We've got white repeating and black repeating. Contrast. So do we have good contrast in here? The juxtaposition of different elements of design. For example, rough and smooth, dark and light. Do we have dark and light in here? Absolutely. So that dark, um, color of the tree leaves against that creamy background creates a nice contrast. Your panda bear has excellent contrast with the black and the white. And even the white stands out against that cream background. Great contrast. Emphasis. So what is the emphasis? I think we talked about that already. We know the emphasis in the focal area is supposed to be on the panda, right? And just a quick question. So does the hug emphasize a message? So we see the panda bear hugging the tree. We talked about this in class last time, that that is actually giving us a hidden agenda. There is a message there that this panda needs that tree in order to survive, right? So that emphasis is important in conveying the artist's message. Does it feel visually balanced? Is it symmetrical or asymmetrical? It's definitely not symmetrical, right? If you drew a line down the middle, we don't have a mirror image, but does it feel balanced anyway? I think it does. Is the panda bear realistically proportioned to the tree it's hugging? No, panda bears in proportion to trees are generally not that big. They're a little smaller, right? 
So it's out of proportion. Why do you think the panda bear is bigger? Does it appeal to your emotions more? Everybody loves panda bears, right? So yeah, the artist is trying to appeal to your emotions, get you to come to the zoo, see the panda bears. What kind of emotional response do you have? Does it make you want to go to the zoo? Does this image feel coherent and whole? So looking at harmony or unity. Um, so I definitely, because of the fact that there are, we definitely have these repetition um, patterns of color and the shapes, it does feel quite unified. What elements lead the eye to the focal area? I think there's a lot of rhythm in this. So we've got rhythm presented by the, the curvilinear tree trunk that kind of moves our eye in this direction, and then we come back down. So for me, I almost feel like there's just this continual movement of my eye around the canvas. Great movement. The third step is interpretation. So wanting to know what's the meaning, right? So for interpretation this week, I really want you to be thinking, is the artist for, against, or ambivalent towards Zeus? So for this assignment, in that assignment folder, I posted four or five videos, and I really did want you to watch them because I think that um, practicing doing research is an important skill to have. And if you're out of practice with that, take this opportunity, watch those five videos and see how learning different perspectives about the zoo impacts you. So after you do your research, does it change your opinion about the zoos? And some of you may have already done that. So you could give me a yes or a no here by using your pointer. Was it easy for you to make a claim? Because that was the purpose of this assignment. Through your artwork, you needed to make a claim. Stating zoos are necessary or zoos should be closed. Was it easy to make a claim for either side after you did your research? Or did you find yourself torn and taking more of an ambivalent stance? So what is ambivalence? Ambivalence is the state of having simultaneous sometimes conflicting feelings towards something like feeling happy and sad at the same time. I know that's how I feel when I go to the zoo. I'm very ambivalent. I'm happy that my daughter has this opportunity to see the animals close up because it's just such an awesome experience. And we learn a lot about the animals. But at the same time, I'm sad to see the animals caged up. And I know that they're not living their ultimate purpose in life, which for any of us is, is a challenge in life to not live up to our potential. So I am ambivalent about zoos. How about you? I want you to be able to use ambivalent in a sentence. So for example, when it comes to the election, I am ambivalent about the candidates. How many of you felt that way this year? Did you have some ambivalence? Meaning, you know what? I'm not really, <laughs> I'm not 100% on any of the candidates in this election. I'm ambivalent. Here's another one. I am ambivalent as to whether or not I want to take the medicine because of the drug's known side effects. You know, I and definitely feel that way. Sometimes I'll get a headache, but you know, I'll do everything I can not to take the Tylenol. After five days, the jury is still ambivalent about the defendant's guilt. That's a tough one. It, you, someone's life is in your hands, and if you're feeling ambivalent about it, it's hard to make a decision. You want more evidence, right? What is the goal of the critique? So, is it A, to evaluate whether an artwork is pretty or ugly? Is it B, to explore, understand, and refine techniques? Is it C, to help the artist improve his or her craft? Or D, all but the first answer? Whoop, I thought I'd circle the answer on that one. So the answer to this is C. Oops, sorry, D. <laughs> all but the first. So the purpose of the critique is for you to explore, understand, and refine techniques 
take what you learn from it and go back and apply that to what you do. It's to help you to improve your craft. So both of those answers are correct. All right, we're gonna practice interpretation, okay? So let's look at interpretation. So the big question is, do you think the artist is for, against, or ambivalent towards Zeus? So you would write a claim that says the artist is, and let's look at this artwork. Is it really right? So what do you think? Is it really right? Do you think that the artist is saying, yeah, zoos are right? Or do you think they're saying, no, zoos are wrong? Or do you think the artist is saying, I'm a little bit torn. Is it right or not? I can't really decide. What about you? That's why I'm posing this question to you. What do you think? So I would go with the artist is ambivalent towards Zeus, as illustrated by the caption in this artwork, is it really right? Here's our next one. Want to be a wise owl? Visit your local zoo. So what do you think? Is the artist for, against, or ambivalent towards zoos? I'd say for. The artist is for zoos, as illustrated by the caption, want to be a wise owl, visit your local zoo. So just using the evidence that you have, you know, you could um, elaborate on that further in your paper. So for, against, or ambivalent, the artist is against zoos, as illustrated by the caption. Haven't you ever wondered what else is out there? So does he. Oh, wow. There's lots of reasons why this artist is for zoos. It's a great day at the zoo. Did you know most zoos on average have about 700 different types of animals you can visit? Good zoos help fight wildlife extinction. Most animals' lifespan is twice as long in captivity versus in the wild. At the zoo, you can observe and even interact with animals you would never otherwise get the chance to see. Now that's cool. Obviously this artist is for zoos as illustrated by the evidence presented, colon, and then you could include this information. So lots of evidence there. This one's kind of hard to see, but it says, who do you choose? So this is an excellent example of contrast being a little bit lacking. You definitely want to have contrast, especially with your text. So this artist would have probably done better to use this same uh, gray, this dark tone on the text because it really does kind of get washed out. Who do you choose? What do you think? Is this stating a definite for against argument or is it more ambivalent? I think that this one is ambivalent. The artist is ambivalent towards zoos as illustrated by the question to the viewer, who do you choose? Or maybe the artist isn't necessarily ambivalent him or herself, but maybe the artist is presenting an ambivalent question. So, and this one I just think is really cute. Putting a lizard in a cage is taking away his right as an American. I love that one. The student definitely is stating a point of view, but is also being comical, which, you know, comedy can actually go a lot further than being serious sometimes, right? If you can make people laugh, they might actually see your point of view more easier because it takes down those human boundaries when we use humor. So the goal of the critique, ah, there it is, <laughs> is all but the first answer. I think that slide should have gone a little earlier. So um, you're going to critique, and I want you guys to be doing those steps of the critique process as you do it, and then you will be voting for a winner, so keep track of the number there.
Um, thank you everybody for your submissions. I really appreciate the time that you put into it. Um, and let's see here. Read the feedback I give you in the grade book, okay? That, you go into your class and then click grades at the top of the homepage. You'll see feedback in there from me. If you don't get a perfect score, use the feedback to make improvements. Um, sometimes I will even give you suggestions on how to make improvements and give you a perfect score. And you're welcome to go back and make those improvements and resubmit so that that artwork can be included in the critique. Come and see me in the classroom for help Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, 3.30 to 4 p.m. And that concludes our critique. So just go ahead and vote for a winner when you go into the content, in the table of contents. There is a class that says 5517 class recording, I believe, and inside of that folder is a survey to vote for the winner. We'll announce the winners at our next critique, which will be next Friday. Woo -woo. And um, yeah, so, all right. All of you who submit your work, you are winners in my book. Have a great weekend.